Thank you very much for joining us. As we've heard, the NRM has launched the fourth year of the implementation of uh, the NRM manifesto. And this is the manifesto which President Museveni campaigned on and uh, which Ugandans uh, are best on to vote him for another term in office of uh, five years. But joining me on set is uh, Mr. Wills Bashaja, the director, NRM implementation. What are the, the achievements that you can point at in the last four years of implementing this manifesto? Uh, they are quite a number. First of all, allow me to thank you, NTV, for, and the viewers there. Uh, there are quite a number of achievements, I think, where the government has uh, really, really made big strides. Uh, we can talk of uh, an achievement like a national airline, which has been uh, uh, re-established. We can talk of the iconic bridge at Jinja, which was constructed and completed. Uh, we can talk of another flagship project like uh, the Isimba Dam, the construction and the completion of Isimba Dam, which is bringing over 180 megawatts to the national grid. We can talk of m in the road infrastructure, you can see that from now you can move from Kampala and go and exit from any of the main uh, border countries when you are moving on Tama. So uh, uh, this year alone, I think uh, over 400 kilometers of paved stock was added to the national stock of roads. And I think when you look at the total stock of the, of the, of the paved roads, we are almost 1,000, um, I think 1,500 plus kilometers, which is uh, halfway almost the target we had for the year. Um, uh, another achievement I think uh, which came with this uh, term was also the creation of the Minister of Science and Technology, which was never there before. And as you can see, Everything now is going science. In the education sector, a lot of uh, pledges that were committed are being done, like the provision of seed schools in, in sub-counties where there was no secondary schools. Over, uh, I think, 117 schools are under construction, and uh, another 100 are being planned for before the conclusion of the term. Okay. Most of these projects you are highlighting and talking about mm -hmm. seem not to have a direct impact on the well-being of Ugandans. I, 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 I agree with you, but you must also know how the, the economy operates. And if you have been very, uh, you have been following the way uh, His Excellency has been communicating over this issue, uh, he's in agreement that some of these projects are there, but they may not bring money directly to your uh, pocket. But the, 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 the fact is that these are drivers of economy. You need, a, you need infrastructure, you need electricity, you need uh, this uh, investment in the school infrastructure so that you can improve the human capital. The other aspect is now to reduce the cost of doing business. You have heard um, uh, where he's saying we need the, the cost of capital to be reduced so that people can be able to borrow and do business and through that they can be able to to be helped to, to, to earn more. And that is how the economy will expand. That's how jobs will grow. That's how even the revenue base will, will, will expand. There's another project you promised Ugandans. That, that was uh, the project of uh, um, extending power to all sub-counties. This project seems to, seems, to, seems to have stalled somewhere. We've seen many sub-counties without power. Is it something that you're looking up to in the last year of the implementation of the manifesto? Yes, uh, that's true. Uh, Actually, the problem has been that uh, is more of administrative in nature because government secured the money to finance this project. It is already there. I think the challenge has been on how to execute. The problem has been execution by the agency that is responsible. And if you have seen of late, there has been a lot of press reports about the infightings and uh, other corrupt-related issues going on within the agency. And the government is mindful of that and I think the responsible uh, minister and the responsible accounting officer are trying to do everything possible to make sure that those administrative issues are sorted and then we can have the project kick-started because the money is already there it's just a question of sorting out those administrative challenges and then the project can be done and I want to agree with you that that is one of the key uh, another flagship area where we see that uh, electricity getting closer to the people that also goes with investments but also and, and other related developments. Still on, still on energy, we are still seeing the cost of energy, cost of power is still high, despite the fact that we have launched many uh, power 
projects. We have many dams coming up, but the cost of power remains high. How are you addressing this? Because it, it affects uh, the cost of doing business. Yeah, I wish to agree with you on that one. And I also want to say that uh, uh, the, 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 the cost of power issues have been challenged, uh, have been intervened through many ways. And one of them is uh, trying to do the restructuring of the financing of the loans which we had acquired, especially like uh, this uh, project in uh, Bujagari. Bujagari. Then uh, the other interventions that have been made are like we need to promote uh, the industrial parks because uh, power will, the cost of power will go down if we have our, the aggregate demand is increased so that there is too much demand for power and it can be consumed. So at the moment you'll find that because there are still few consumers who are, because of the lack of access and connectivity and penetration of electricity, the cost may still be high. I agree with you and I think this is still a challenge on how to, uh, uh, to address. And I know so many other interventions are being made to make sure that this is resolved. However, uh, all, all is not lost and I want to say that uh, due to some interventions that have been made, uh, the cost of power on, on, on off-peak has been uh, uh, reduced considerably, close to 7 or 8 cents from the 11 cents which we are, which we are charging as on the beginning of the term. The target is 5 cents. Okay. With uh, the COVID pandemic that we are suffering from and uh, environmental challenges that are also with us, are you planning to change the way you're implementing your manifesto in the last year? You, you will realize that now uh, uh, the, <coughs> the issue of COVID is not unique with Uganda. This is a global challenge. And uh, I want to say that uh, this pandemic has disrupted all, uh, uh, all the whole fabric of, of our society, be it religious, uh, be it political, social, economic, to name about, talk about it. And uh, secondly, we must also realize that it was like an ambush. This is not something that we had anticipated that would come and then impact on us in this kind of manner. So this now means that uh, many of the implementation, implementing agencies will have to realign their planning and budget frameworks to be able to take care of those immediate uh, uh, gaps that need to be addressed, which definitely may, 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 may mean a shift from the planned uh, outputs originally and definitely this will not uh, allow us to be able to probably to realize the kind of targets that we are looking at by the end of term. Okay. I was at Kololo on 12th May when the president was um, swearing in and uh, he, promised us, he promised us that this was Chisanja, Akuna Muchezo. In terms of fighting corruption, how far with this? We are still seeing public money being stolen by civil servants. How are you addressing this in your manifesto? Uh, one thing I want to be clear on is that the president has not lost the steam over this fight. Secondly, the issue of corruption is quite complicated. You know, uh, because of the way it manifests and probably the way it has also permeated in our society. But I think it is a challenge that each of us as a citizen must come out and be, and be sober and say, what is it that I can do that can contribute to the fight in this war. We cannot only say that this is, we point fingers, we say that this is a war that will be fought by the president and completed, fought by the ministers and completed, fought by the police and other agencies. No, I think it is a responsibility of each and every Ugandan to see what can I do to make sure that corruption goes away. And as you are aware, it takes two to tango. Yeah. As we wind up, the, pro the president again promised us that we will be in the middle income status by the end of uh, this five year term. And I think we are still not yet there. What, what do you have to say about this? Did you lie to Ugandans? <laughs> uh, I don't think it was a lie. It was a lie because um, if you are a forward thinking person, you, you have to plan and probably you have this, this vision or ambition on where you want to go in the, in the future. I must say that there must have been some assumptions which were supporting this uh, thinking. But unfortunately, along the way, maybe some of the assumptions could not work. 
I will say that, for example, in the first two years into this uh, term, you remember what happened around, we were ravaged by very severe weather, which impacted very negatively on the production aspects. We had uh, some conflict in the southern Sudan, which also impacted negatively on our economy. So uh, the, the, the growth, the rate of growth of, of the economy by then actually went up to almost 3%. Uh, uh, now, the assumption on the onset was that probably our economy would grow and maybe it would be around 10 or 11% to be able to achieve this. Second, there were also planned projects which we thought they would spur the growth. Uh, issues like SGR uh, and many of these uh, power projects, uh, generation and uh, evacuation and transmission, but most of them have not taken off to support the kind of growth we were anticipating. We have only been lucky that uh, maybe um, the weather has been very, very good in the last uh, three years. And uh, uh, with this, uh, we have been able to, uh, in some communities where there has been some support of sorts where government intervened with the, li uh, the livelihood programs like uh, OWC interventions and whatever, so, so some, some, could, some have really crossed into, into, this, into that uh, status of uh, the $1,000 target. However, it is still a challenge and I think it is still on our table for planning and making sure that we need to work hard as a country and be able to realize it. Thank you very much, Mr. Basasha, the Director NRM Implementation. Thank you so much.